Good morning friends, Linda here. I am thinking that today we're gonna do a lot of cooking because my freezers are empty. But before that I need to go and water the garden because it is 6 a.m. in the morning and I want to water it before it gets too hot. It's already 19 degrees out there and it's 6 a.m. It does not bode well for the rest of the day. <laughs> I'll, I have all of the windows open in the house and it's hot. <laughs> I've been to the garden and I have watered everything. We are ready to start. I am going to try a different way of doing things today. Usually I just run around like headless chicken looking for things in the cupboards. But because I want to try two, four different recipes today and it's just going to fill my freezer, I have pulled everything out. Let me just show you. Most of the things that I need, I went recipe by recipe and pulled them all out. They're all here. I have a massive 5 kilo bag of chicken that's been out since last night. I pulled it out so it's like almost defrosted, which is perfect for cutting because you do not want it like super floppy, but you don't want it completely frozen. It's easier to cut when it's half frozen. <laughs> Main point today is gonna be stay hydrated because it's gonna be hot in this kitchen, like really, really hot. Idea today is to make <clears throat> tikka masala, honey lime chicken, which is really, really tasty. Then make some fajitas, prepare them in the tubs to be popped into the freezer and then popped into the pan and then some make some um, hunter's chicken which is chicken wrapped in bacon with cheese and barbecue sauce on top and it's really tasty as well as you can see all of the recipes today are chicken based because I like to do that I like to do one meat at a time and then the next day when I have the time I might do pork First thing we're gonna do, we're gonna process the chicken. I need a lot of chicken cut. My sharp knife and my meat cutting board. I have a meat cutting board because I do not want to split it apart. Like have my wooden ones that are for vegetables. I will need to process these peppers as well, but they will be processed on the wooden cutting board. And I like this chicken because it's split in bags of one kilo. <laughs> go outside and grab another bag of chicken. I knew that I had one kilo left somewhere. Um, I'm gonna take my wings off before I deal with everything. You can tell which one's par frozen chicken and which one's fully frozen chicken. Yeah this one's still like really cold and they stick together. <laughs> I have split it all up. So this is gonna be, be my hunter's chicken, which is wrapped in bacon. I'll put the recipes in the comments, uh, in the description of the video. This is gonna be my tikka, two lots of tikka. This is gonna be my lemon lime honey chicken, which is two lots as well. And this is gonna be my fajitas, which I'm eyeballing basically, because <laughs> That's what you do, right? And now we just start cutting, which is gonna be fun 45 minutes of my life, I think. Hydrate. I 
I'm already thirsty. Let's start with fajitas. And give the tikka a bit more time to unfreeze. I'm moving towards the light because I can start a light there. So it's lighter there so I can see what I'm actually doing because it's quite dark in my kitchen. Have I told you guys? It's literally like a straight room with a window at the end. <laughs> and because we are at the side terrace, it has one window on the side, but everything else is like dark. And I really want like a window here, would be really nice, would like make the room a lot lighter, but I don't think I can do it. <laughs> do you see how easy it is to cut half frozen chicken? It's not as hard as this, but it's still frozen in the middle. So it's less floppy and it's a lot harder, uh, easier to manage. I know that 5 kilo bag of chicken is like a massive freezer space taker, but I buy it once before I, um, before I know I will have a cooking day. And then it goes in the freezer in the meals and things from the freezer come out as I eat them and so I freeze the room. <laughs> it just makes sense, right? And yeah, this is gonna take a long time. <laughs> I'll see you after I'm done. <laughs> so basically, these ones need to be in the, like small strips because I like my fajitas to be like longish. These will be in small cubes, about one point one centimeter by one centimeter, or yeah. And then these will be in large chunks for tikka, uh, about two centimeters by two centimeters, like an inch by inch. And this is half an inch. And these are just strips, like teeny tiny little strips. Okay, I'll see you later. Bye. <laughs> I finished the chicken, all done, it's now 8 o'clock in the morning, it took longer than I anticipated and my hands like, yeah, I was fighting with the frozen bits. <laughs> I'm thinking that the next thing I need to do is the peppers. So half of them will go into chunks for tikka masala and half of them will go into strips for fajitas. Aren't they pretty? And then the onions as well. Oh, Sorry about the mess in the background, but this is a live house. And these are the onions. And I will need to cut some for basically tikka masala. Needs like four. Let me just check. Four onions per batch. So eight onions total for tikka masala alone and then for fajitas as well um, it's gonna be 50-50 with the pepper because I just like onions who doesn't like onions, right? I'm gonna start running out of bowls to put the stuff in <laughs> I have washed these already so they are ready to go need my compost bucket nearby. All of this stuff just goes to allotment and it sits in my compost bin in there which is great because I do not have enough room to do it here at home. I think I'm gonna leave two of each color for fajitas because 
it's gonna be more fun with more colors in it but for tikka masala it doesn't really matter so I'm just gonna do an inch squares that's gonna go for tikka I will cut them all and then I'll come back and I'll show you guys. I'll probably cut all of the onions outside because my eyes are very, very sensitive to onions. And if I do it inside, I'll be looking like I've been crying for the rest of the day. I have done everything. I have cut everything up. There we go. Everything is prepared. I have onions outside, otherwise they make me cry. They actually did make me cry. I got myself a metal bowl, which is awesome. This is my first one ever. These are gonna make me cry again. So I had a good cry, had a breakfast, sat down with a cup of tea, and now it's 10 o'clock in the morning. We're gonna start on the two batches of tikka. I'm gonna split everything up because the amount that I'm gonna cook is too big for one of these pans. It's 25 grams of butter in each. I'm gonna roast some onions, I'm gonna split this in half and then we're gonna keep adding things to it. setting things on fire. I set my <laughs> little piece of <laughs> my belt on fire. It smells like it's burning and it's a bit brown now. I should not be left near a stove. A couple of pinches of salt on each. And hydrate. It's 25 degrees outside today, uh, 25 degrees Celsius. I don't know how much that's in Fahrenheit, I will look up. Apparently it's 77 degrees Fahrenheit, 25 Celsius. We're just waiting for these to be brown, like golden, and then we're gonna add the thicker paste, one can for each. And we will need to add these in because the rawness of the spices will need to be baked out and it will mellow out the taste. I usually rinse it out because there's a lot of spices that you don't get and the water will just evaporate and just disappear it's very loud in here now <laughs> I'm gonna start washing up as I go because I get overwhelmed with dirty plates and dishes everywhere, you know that. Okay. Now we add the peppers, half and half. See how fast it's filling up? <laughs> yeah, I think I need like bigger casseroles or pans. I don't know how you call these. <laughs> If I was trying to make this in one pot, it would be almost full. And then I still need to add the chicken and then tomatoes and yeah, 
lots of stuff <laughs> and some water. Time to add the chicken. You just need to coat the chicken in the paste and the peppers and the onions and then cook for a couple of minutes and then we're going to add the rest of the things like the chopped tomatoes. I went through my stash and this can is dented so I do not want to keep it because it might break the incredible integrity of the cans are not that, as good. So I'm using up all of my dented cans first. And then I went to my freezer and got some frozen tomato puree and I'm just going to add this one as well. And then I have some dried tomato as well. <laughs> I will add that as well from last year. All I'm caring at the moment is that the chickens cook through and then after that I don't mind if the other vegetables are a bit like more raw because I will freeze it and then I will cook it again at which point it will be fine. And yeah, so sometimes you want it to be like par cooked instead of like fully cooked. Ah, fighting with cans. I don't have tomato paste. It, the recipe asks for a couple of tablespoons of tomato paste per batch and two cans of chopped tomato. Because I don't have it, I will use the puree that I have frozen and the dried tomato instead of it. It will be fine. one and a half because I have only three jars but I will overcompensate with other other bits 200 milliliters of water one clump of puree and then the other side can go into this one it doesn't look perfectly red because it was not made from purely red tomatoes it was made from purples reds greens and yellows and some oranges as well so it all mixed together ends up pretty really unappealing color but in the same time it tastes really nice Mark likes his food a bit spicier than normal, so I'm going to add some chilies as well. I know it's not going to be tikka masala anymore, but it's, it's like an adaptation on the main recipe for us, and it works. It makes him cry sometimes when, <laughs> when it's so hot. <laughs> I think I'm going to make one of the batch hot and one of them not. It's plenty. And then the, the last of the chilies, I'm going to give it to my birds because birds don't have the, the heat sensor detector so they can eat any kind of chilies and be completely fine. <laughs> well, that's working and doing that thing. I'm going to start doing the hunter's chicken which is like chicken breast wrapped in bacon with the barbecue sauce and cheese on top and I'm gonna start putting them into the bits, into the dishes. I'm getting tired and I'm forgetting how to speak. I'm so sorry. I think this is like my fourth or fifth glass of water. I have lost count. I use these Pyrex dishes because I can cook in them and I can freeze them. It was a bit of an investment in the beginning for starting out and I didn't buy them all at the same time I have quite a few though now and it's slowly been accumulating <laughs> I'm not gonna put too much barbecue sauce in there because last time I did and what happened was because it unfroze and I'll freeze these as well it just slid off because the barbecue sauce goes in between the cheese and the and the bacon it's in between 
So it unfroze and all of the cheese slid off. breasts a piece because that's that's plenty me mark and i that's our lunch yeah i i drenched it last time so this time i'm not gonna drench it i'm gonna be like very gentle with it and go around the edges a bit more i just wanted to marinate a little bit with the barbecue sauce when i'm putting it from the frozen into the fridge to cook the next day Maybe that was the issue because I cooked it from frozen straight off and barbecue sauce probably unfroze the first. I think that will be fine and then when I cook it I'll put more barbecue sauce on. <laughs> and then just cheese. Loads and loads of cheese. I might have grated a little bit too much but it's no problem. We will live with it. And then these will be going into the freezer now. It is ready. Now we just need to put some mango chutney in there. Half and half. And I'll put some yogurt in there as well. I know yogurt doesn't freeze well, but because it's dissolved into the bigger, it doesn't actually doesn't separate that much. Because milk products separate when you freeze them. They separate in solids and, and liquids. take them to the table to cool down before we start bottling them into smaller containers. <laughs> well those are cooling off we're gonna start on number three now which is fajitas. I have seen a lot of people do them raw but to me that doesn't feel like uh, I like to par cook them with the spices and then add more spices if I want to when I cook them again the second time but the vegetables I add are raw and I have already pre-cooked or uh, pre-cut them I'm so sorry if you can hear my birds they are having a fight it's a pack mentality they are deciding who's gonna be the top bird and at the moment one of them is trying to climb the social ladder <laughs> I'm gonna be adding some fajita mix that I made myself this is an old one that I made about two months ago and then this is the one I whipped out this morning for it because I knew I didn't have enough. Pretty good. And it's a lot cheaper than in the stores. I will cook it for about three to four minutes and in the same time I'm gonna put out uh, like the containers and start dishing out the portion sizes.
I have left the last one, the hardest one to the last. This is Mark's favorite one, so that's why I keep making it. For this one we just need to cook the chicken until it's golden and then we will need to add some pineapple juice and then we're gonna make the glaze from honey in it and starch and then we're gonna put the chicken back in, cook it with pineapple it's a bit convoluted and doesn't produce like large amount which I like and I can never remember it so I always have a cheat sheet with me While that's baking, I'm going to drain two cans, because this is a double recipe, you would have one can. I will drain it and... Oh, it's rings. Oh no, it's rings. You will need the juice, and then the chunks you will need as well. But these are not chunks, so I will need to chop them up a bit. Oh, picky. We just make them in chunkies. I'm almost done. I'm so happy about it. In the morning, usually I start with, yeah, I can do everything. And around midday, I'm going like, oh no, I don't want to do this anymore. But it is 12 o'clock now. Uh, my alarm just went off. And we're almost done. We are in the last recipe. Then we need to decan the tikka masala into pots, wait for it to cool, and then just shove it in the freezer. And we're gonna be done. And because I have kept myself really busy and tidied up after myself, there's not much to tidy in the kitchen as well. I'm super proud of that. <laughs> but seriously proud. The recipe asks for a quarter cup of the juice to be added once the kitchen is hot, like golden brown. But because I know that I'm gonna cook it again, it doesn't really matter. It's not raw. The centers are like a little bit raw, but that will cook out once I start actually cooking it all through. Because it was one quarter and I doubled it, now it's one half, right? So half a cup of juice. And now it needs to simmer for six to eight minutes. And that basically will cook the chicken. Ta it's gonna ask for a quarter cup of honey. I have this very old one. It was clear honey, but what happens with the honey over time it solidifies and the sugar crystals become solid in, in it. But it's it's still okay with cooking because it melts. <laughs> Once it melts, it turns back to liquid. I think while I'm waiting, I'm gonna start decanting my tikka masala. I got, I got these soup cubes because I saw a TikTok about them, like these ones. And I'm thinking I'm gonna decant the spicy one into this one and then freeze it in cubes. And then when I want to eat it, I will pop them out. Of course, once they're frozen, I'll pop them out, keep them in like a plastic bag, in a Ziploc baggie. But because they are square, they can be square, right? I can just pop them in a pan and I don't need to have um, a container that they sit in. <laughs> so this is the first experiment. We'll try it out, see how it goes. <laughs> Mm. 
Now the hardest part, I don't really like this part at all because I find it very, very stressful. This has been simmering for eight minutes now. And I have decanted the uh, spicy tikka, tikka into some containers. We need to get the chicken out, leave the juices back in. Okay, so chicken is going to stay here for now. Then we need to add the honey. The lime juice that we have to. And that is three tablespoons lime juice. So this is gonna be six tablespoons lime juice. Shake it before. Six of those. Uh, and it's because it's so so fast, like so fast paced, you need to be on the spot of this. The lime juice, soy sauce. Then we have two tablespoons soy sauce, so four together. One, two, three, four. Four of that. The remainder of the pineapple juice and I need to dissolve probably two tables, two teaspoons of cornstarch. So that's four teaspoons of cornstarch. And I am just so hot. One. Gonna dissolve it in the pineapple juice, no lumps, because what I usually find is that if I put cornstarch straight into there, it just kind of like the heat reacts and it doesn't dissolve, it clumps up, and then you need to stir it for a long time and it doesn't glaze. <laughs> and now we stir like crazy for two to three minutes until it changes. <laughs> It's glazed now and it is kind of dark color but clear, not milky white anymore. So now, pardon me, the pineapples and the chicken can go back in. I need to wash up and put everything away and yes <laughs> okay I'm done these are all of my meals Ta -da! there is 23 meals if I count two cubes per per meal as well one for me and one for Mark and if I cook them together then yeah 23 meals and some some onions <laughs> that left over from fajitas I will start moving these to my freezer as they cool down because they need to be room temperature before I can move them into the freezer otherwise the freezer might not like it. <laughs> Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. I know it's been like seven hours and it's been a long video but glass number nine. Cheers. And I think I'm gonna go have a shower and then I am gonna hang out with you guys in a chat in YouTube and then I am gonna go and watch a movie with Mark <laughs> it's, it's a good day it's, it's one o'clock and the day is just starting <laughs>
Bye, friends.